Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now some people say dual core processors are obsolete, some even say quad core processors are obsolete. I think both of these opinions are wrong, I mean we've just seen the Athlon 3000G hit the market and considering it has just two cores and four threads it can still put up a pretty good fight. Plus it's priced well which definitely helps. Having said that though, a two core CPU without hyper threading will probably struggle in 2019. Aside from modern Athlon chips, AMD have made some incredible strides when it comes to CPUs in the last few years, but there have certainly been some questionable releases along the way, not that Intel are completely innocent. One particularly interesting period from AMD's long history though is the whole triple core processor situation, something that Intel don't have and probably don't want bragging rights to. Take this for example, it's called the Phenom 2 X3 710. It's clocked at 2.6 GHz, is supported by the old AM3 platform and has three cores. It's one of many 3 core AMD processors and shares the same backstory as the rest. It started life as a quad core, but one core didn't work right so AMD just disabled said core and sold it anyway. It's sort of a faulty X4955. 10 years ago it was ok, if you couldn't afford the quad core this one may have been an attractive alternative, but as we fast approach 2020, this 2.6GHz tri-core is likely as fast as a snail on a Segway, which is actually faster than a snail without a method of motorised transport, so that joke doesn't really make sense, but let's all have a nice laugh as we watch this thing attempt to run some games. I've paired it with my hot and power hungry Vega 64 which should ensure the CPU reaches its maximum potential. So let's see what it can do. For the gaming tests I decided to start with Counter Strike Global Offensive. Now this is a CPU intensive game but despite this we were able to run it with at least 60 frames per second albeit with the settings turned down to low. Now because I've paired this CPU with my Vega 64 which we all know is capable of running pretty much everything out there with 60 frames per second we're not being held back by the graphics card in any regard. It's still a very nice GPU albeit quite power hungry and the Phenom on the other hand well will certainly struggle in a lot of instances though I have to admit it initially started off better here than I anticipated when you first fire up the game there will be a few moments of slowdown and um, perhaps as the assets load things like that but after that well it's an okay experience there's not too much lag and stutter though a few drops may occur here and there and we're off to a better start than I thought, so that can only be a good thing. Now the Vega 64 is perfectly capable of running Crisis, this 2007 classic, the OG PC melter as it were, 60 frames per second should be the result here but because of the Phenom we are experiencing around 30 with some heavy dips. Now all of the gameplay was captured externally using a secondary laptop with an i5 and a GTX 1060 inside so there's no worries about hindering the performance here by recording with internal capture software such as Relive or OBS. Everything is done externally with an external capture box. What you see here is exactly what you will get when using the Phenom X3 and a Vega 64. Crisis looks fantastic at high, even today, but the frame drops are quite off-putting and it will probably ruin your overall gaming experience here. Now Battlefield 5, well, it was an interesting one, we must have been playing through a fairly dark level. Of course we weren't, the game just jammed, I fired the game up and we sat looking at the screen for what is a rough estimation of half an hour before the game just closed. Now Battlefield 5 is a very CPU intensive game, so CPU intensive in fact that it simply refused to work on the Phenom X3 here which is really no surprise. Now Dirt Rally 2 
seems to just operate in a world of its own. It doesn't care what CPU you're using most of the time. As long as you've got a good graphics card, then Dirt Rally 2 will run absolutely fine. You can see here we're getting 70 frames per second, and the 1% and 0.1% lows are also very respectable. There were no heavy frame drops, dips, stutters, anything like that to speak of, especially during this time trial test, and the overall experience was a very good one. I paid £10 for this processor, £20 pounds for the motherboard it sits on and then another 15 pounds for the memory if you're in a race with other players that frame rate may be a little lower but overall you're going to have a great experience with dirt rally 2 and this triple core phenom chip from late last decade now as we went looking for mish mish chief mish mischief mischief in <laughs> kingdom come deliverance well we certainly were in for a treat as far as the frame rate was concerned. 30 FPS was the average, or 31 I should say, which was quite surprising, though uh, there were certainly a few stutters, but I was very surprised that this game, which is notably CPU intensive, was actually running on this chip. What I will say is that the intro movie, which seems to be very harsh on a processor, took quite a long time to load, a couple of minutes as opposed to a few seconds with newer processor so that's something to bear in mind though after skipping past that everything works as it should the in-game menus operate fine the game itself runs okay but the frame dips are probably going to put you off now i couldn't really end this video without trying red dead redemption 2 this is probably the newest game on today's list a very modern title indeed and a very very demanding one now the vega 64 when paired with any new processor any new half decent processor such as an i5 or ryzen 3 or 5 for example well it will do just fine but with the phenom triple core here the game wouldn't even start I was sort of expecting this, I threw this title in here as sort of a gamble, I wasn't expecting much at all, and unfortunately this time it didn't pay off. In fact, it didn't pay off in such a high regard that it even jammed my PC to the point of not working for a good 10 minutes. Furthermore, the laptop I'm using to record this footage froze as well. I don't know how that's even possible. The performance of this machine should have no effect on the performance of the laptop. So for them both to freeze, well, something went catastrophically wrong somewhere down the line. So just to give you an idea quickly of the CPU performance on its own, I ran Cinebench R20, which I've been gradually updating with other processors to give you a decent comparison. Now this one came absolutely bottom of the pile. It took about 25 minutes to complete the test. I went outside, made a few calls, and when I came back, it really hadn't moved much. As you can see, the result's trying to hide at the bottom of the page here so you don't see it. I think it's so disappointed in itself, it's trying to shy away. So the Outer Worlds, yeah, ran with an average of around 40 frames per second, but we were seeing a few drops, and when I say a few, I mean a lot about 9 and 3 were the 1% and 0.1% lows, which was certainly noticeable. Now, this will vary depending on the area you're in. Some areas of the game will run fine. You'll probably see an average of around the same, and the 1% and 0.1% lows will be ever so slightly higher, but it does mean that you won't see as many stutters. Here, however, during the opening level, um, there were certainly a few problems. That's why I tend to benchmark this area because it can be amongst the most problematic. You would think other busier areas would cause more issues, but this one in particular seems to wreak havoc on older hardware. So I said at the start that the reason these were sold as triple cores was because the fourth core wasn't working quite right, and that isn't actually the case in 100% of situations. See, on some, the fourth core is just disabled for no real reason and it can even be unlocked with some chips and motherboards so i jumped into my bios and decided to give it a go but unfortunately when it came to loading windows the whole system froze and so this is not a compatible cpu or at least it didn't work for me i also tried it on another more powerful am3 board that i didn't know i had until i got to about this point in the video and even then well no such luck, so it's just luck of the draw. Some CPUs do have this unlocking 
potential and some will have to be used as triple core chips but in this day and age unlocking that extra core probably isn't going to help you too much in a lot of newer titles anyway you'll probably still see quite a few stutters and frame drops I do hope you've enjoyed this video anyway, I've wanted to take a look back at triple core processors for a while. If you did enjoy this, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, let me know if you still have a triple core CPU in your system, maybe you still use it on a daily basis, maybe it's your go to gaming CPU, I don't know, maybe you do, but yeah let me know in the comments below and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.